So we're live. We are live. Are we going to fly now? We are going to fly. Going to fly now. What's that? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. I don't know what you're talking about. It's Academy Award winning, or Academy Award nominated song. Oh, for this movie. <sighs> I just didn't Get know the title. Get your head in the of... game, man. Come, come on. on. Or your head in the fight. Are you kidding me? I've it's been like humming game. the theme in my head all day long. I'm very excited to talk about it this has... movie. It's a very important film. This the music has knocked um, the city of stars out of my head. Greetings, imagination connoisseurs! Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your master of fun and wonder, your viceroy of verisimilitude, your sommelier of cinema, and of course, your pharaoh of physical media, Robert Meyer Burnett. And we are here with Elizaveu's episode number sixty-three, and I am here with my lovely compatriot. Who might you be? I am Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell. I am the ace, the arbiter of cinematic excellence, and the enchantress of entertainment. And the enchantress of entertainment. We have a very special movie. We do. Uh, a movie that made 11,000 times its budget at the box office. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. 11,000 times its budget. Wow. Clearly one of the most successful movies ever made just on its own. But it spawned seven sequels. My God. Yes. Over the course of 40 years. And come on, man. 45 that music years. is so iconic and rocky. Come on. I know. So we are doing John Avildsen's Rocky, the original Rocky, the number one Rocky, the first and foremost. The still, one that started it all. The one that started it all. <laughs> but before, of course, we talk about Rocky, we must drink. And we have a special bottle of wine tonight that I think you have... Actually, I think you might have some opinions about before we even drink it. Well, I'm very grateful that we were sent this wine. Julius Goodwin sent us this wine. That was very kind. From a, from a winery from Walla Walla, Washington. And I've been to Walla Walla. It's beautiful up there. It is. and Great wineries up there. He sent us two rosés. Pink wine for dudes. And this is from which... which what's this winery? I can't, it's hard to read. Can't Dude. Read. There you go. <laughs> Knock point. Uh, rocking, knocking, knocking point. Knocking point. There you go. Wines. Walla Walla. Yes. Pink wine for dudes. There's even two bros uh, high fiving yeah. between the uh, uh, d the uh, actually the the eye and wine is two bro two dudes. I love it. A nice rose. But my question is, do Why you, you think I'm a dude? <laughs> Well, I think I think having a, a glass of wine with a lovely lady means that it's pink wine for dudes because when you have pink wine for dudes, it allows you to have wine with a lovely companion. Oh, I see. Okay. So there you go. But so Julius, <laughs> I want to thank you. I believe Julius lives in Georgia. I think. Oh. I somewhere. How he knows about this wine? He's cultured. Look at the beautiful color. This is a really beautiful looking wine. Hmm. Well. Cheers to Julius, mm. and cheers to Rocky. Pink wine mm. for dudes. Mm, I like that. Oh, this is lovely. It is lovely. It's not sweet. No. Which I don't like. Yeah, I don't it's like sweet. It's kind of dry. I like a I, nice tangy dry I do too. Rose. And Very it came nice. from my home state, so it should be good. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, we we watch this. This is from my because I am the pharaoh of physical media. This is my Rocky set, <laughs> and this is uh, I don't know what does this go up to. Goes up to Rocky Balboa. So this was put out before Creed, probably in uh, to support Creed to come out. Uh, it's a great set, and uh, it was great to watch it. I hadn't watched the first Rocky in a long time. Oh, me since I was very young. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. and I watch it over the years. I mean. It you, you know it's it's funny we talk about this being romantic Friday. <laughs> I mean not only does this movie have a romance in it. Come on man. We all remember the line Adrian. Yeah, but you know uh it's t looking back it came out in 1976. 44 years old the film is. It is a quintessential American romance because it is, it is one of the most classic stories about the the working class underdog who he he's I had forgotten that he's he's basically he's a he's a collections officer of mobs for a mobster for like a bookie yeah. <clears throat> you know and Joe Spinell the great Joe Spinell 
Yeah, the family's got a lot of buttons, Senator. From Godfather 2, he of course went on to play Maniac, the titular Maniac in the movie Maniac. Joe Spinell, who plays, who, who plays Count Zarth Arn in Star Crash. <laughs> So Sylvester Stallone works for him. Yeah, he's like a gangster. And Gazzo he, and the gangster. You know, he, he loans out money. He's like a loan shark. And and um, Rocky is his, you know, his his guy who, who makes the collections. But I mean this... And breaks thumbs. And, and breaks thumbs. This movie was shot on the streets of Philadelphia. A few scenes shot in L.A., but mostly shot in Philadelphia. It was very, it was, yes, very authentic to Philadelphia. I lived there for six years. Sophie was born there. Peak and verisimilitude. This movie yes. has a lot. Again, it has that gritty seventies movie mm -hmm. vibe. The, the 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 I love the um, the film qual the film stock. Like you could never get a movie looking the way. I mean, you kind of could if you digitally yeah. affected it, but it has that great seventies grit it to does. it. Does and this is one of the first films that used a steady cam. Oh. When when Rocky is running. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there's one of the first uses of a Steadicam. Very cool. And it's it's really used well. I the iconic run up the 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 Philadelphia the, the museum. The Philadelphia Museum of Art, great art museum, one of the best in the world. Really good museum. And I I mean I really <laughs> love this uh, this film. It's it 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 it's it, it, look. It so much has been written about this film series over the last forty four years. <laughs> really. Everybody knows the story. <laughs> But what's interesting, going back to, at least to me, watching this, Stallone is great. He is. He really is. And, and you know, people like Roger Ebert compared him to a young Brando. And, yeah. But his, uh, he wrote this movie. He did. And his dog that he had to give away is in this movie. That's his dog get, at the pet why store. Why did he have to give it he, away? Because he needed money. He, like, sold his dog. And then when he got, when he made Rocky, he went back and got his dog back. Is that uh, the dog? Yeah. The actual the, dog? The dog that's in the cage that's... That's his dog. That's In real life, that yeah. was his dog. Now, I don't Aww. know if he had to sell it. He sold it before. I think he sold it before, and then when he got the money to make Rocky, or he got paid for his script, he went back and bought his dog back. Buttkiss. And his dog is even... Yes, Buttkiss Stallone. He's even credited in the movie. Aww. Buttkiss. Buttkiss. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's credited in the film. Aww. And Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier's in this movie. You could tell that he wrote this and that it was a really a big part of who he is. I mean, it felt very real the way he was acting, you know, being Rocky. And and I think that, you know, Rocky loved animals. And I, I bet you that um, Sylvester Stallone loves animals. Right. Well, I, I think what's really interesting about this film is that, like, at the time... It was not universally loved by a lot of the great critics, like Vincent Canby. A lot of people said that other actors who were in would have done, like Frank Capra. Like it, it, it didn't have the heart that other movies had, which is sort of, I think. Look, what's so great about this film is it's a mere a few years after Vietnam, and and the 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 inner city. There was a lot of people. <clears throat> from the inner cities that were affected by the Vietnam War. A lot of the yeah. poor were, were people that were drafted and uh, of all walks of life, you know, of all, uh, mostly, you know, an inordinate amount of black Americans and low-income people. And, and I think at the time that this movie came out, it cannot be stressed enough what this film meant to a lot of Americans. Yeah, I mean, this was a total underdog film. It was like, you, you just want him to succeed. Like... You know, he got this one in a million chance to to do this fight, which he would never in a million years have gotten if if certain things hadn't happened. And um, every American dreams of that, you know, dreams of your one chance. And and what I'd forgotten, I always forget this. The movie opens with a fight. You know, the opening scene is is Rocky fighting. Yeah. An old, kind of an over the hill fighter that and, and people like even though he wins he makes forty dollars <laughs> you know and, and and he still has to pay for his locker and the shower <laughs> fee and, and all the that towel. And the towel and 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 it's not a good fight like you don't you don't see that he has a lot of fighting prowess it's kind of like it, yeah. it, it's like two old dogs scrapping <laughs> in a junkyard I mean yeah. it's not like he's yeah. he's he's they're not trying very hard. I, oh, I think I think Rocky is, but they just the skill that, I mean, they're they're fighting and basically, 
in a place where they're never going to get out of it. Yeah. And then, like, even at his gym, Mickey's gym, he 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 finds out that that his locker that he had for six years, he's yeah. been evicted from his locker. Yeah. And his stuff is hanging in a bag in what they call Skid Row in his own gym. I mean, it's so. Well, yeah, and then you learn that the gym owner is kind of pissed at him because he's working for a mobster and um you know and he sees so much potential in him and he's like why are you wasting your life and of course the great burgess meredith yeah who who in a you know plus he's like you know you never your nose has never been broken kind of like you're not trying hard enough and it's 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 uh, it, it, he burgess meredith again people would always bring up at the time the movie came out that there were other actors that would would pick their teeth with Burgess Meredith's performance as Mickey. What? But I would, I yeah, it's so it's so funny to go back and read commentary on these films that yeah. came out because, you know, I think the the thing about this film is that again when it came out post Vietnam War, where we're still licking our wounds from that war and many of you know fifty eight thousand or something Americans had died, and th- there was a deep cynicism post Watergate post Martin Luther King and yeah. post Kennedy both Kennedys being killed and I, I mean America was not in a great place mm-hmm. and and this film comes out and even the movies of the time the the great network and 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 um, uh, uh, all the president's men and I think taxi driver was taxi the driver in 1976 year. yeah they both came out by the way interesting uh, interesting fact this movie was the number one highest grossing film of 1976. It also was the second highest grossing film of 1977 because Star Wars was number one because movies would play. This movie played for over eight months. Yeah, so, I remember when movies used to play a long time. I mean, they play time. a long time and, and, and people kept going. And so this really was, I, I think this was, it was very cathartic. I mean, this was sort of a balm yes. on the soul of America yeah, yes, yes, when, yes. It, when it came out. And, and it's... You know, it's it's stripped down, even the romance with with I, I it's love. It's a very simple story, uh, but I think that people really like loved the idea of this this underdog, you know, going all the way to the top. Yeah, um, but but it, it it's not overblown, like it's not overwrought. Right. It, it's it doesn't. I, I mean, he feels very believable, mm-hmm. and it's it's, and it, you have to say that I think one of the great casting coups. They didn't want at first. They didn't want Stallone to play this role. They, you know, they wanted someone like Robert Redford, of course, because everybody wants Robert Redford. He stuck to his guns. He's like, you can't, you can't have my script unless I star. And I think finding Carl Weathers as Apollo Creed was mm-hmm. a huge coup. Yeah, that. that I mean, is again, a great again, casting. Burgess Meredith, Apollo, uh, uh, Carl Weathers, Talia Shire, coming off of the Godfather films. I mean, one of the Corleone family, yeah. Connie. She came on uh, to do this film. Yeah, she was great. And uh, she was great. And and an actress that she, when you first see her, she's really mousy. Well, yeah, she's meant to. Uh, but her be transfer, like this. I mean, she transforms <laughs> like as they date. You know, like when she's coming out in her jacket on the steps. Yeah. And he's like, "Wow!" You, and they really make that transformation believable, but not too Absolutely. believable. It's yeah. believable within the realm of Talia Shire. Yeah. And by the end of the movie, she's beautiful. Yes. And it's 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 really well done. And the it, this was nominated for ten Academy Awards. Yes, and it won. It won three, three. Academy Awards. It won Best Picture, um, uh, and it won for uh, Best Director. John Alvinson won for Best Director, and it won for uh, Film Editing. Oh, interesting. And because uh, the editing is especially I, the, I, did, I wouldn't have given it an Oscar for editing. The fight scenes are great. I mean, they're great well, and they're so believable. Yeah, there's one point in the fight scene where they cross the line and it just felt weird. I felt disoriented. But oh, listen to you, Miss Film Student. They crossed the line. And what <laughs> shot? What scene was that? When they're first in the ring, and he starts pointing at him. I want you. Uh, they cross the line and you can't tell like where where is he is he it feels like he's not even pointing. You mean when at him. Apollo Creed's p- saying? Yeah, it doesn't feel like he's pointing at at Rocky. All right, well they, they they change the camera the, the camera angle is yeah. Wow, I guess you've been paying attention. <laughs> 
across the line. Across what are we gonna do line. with her, huh? It got an Oscar. It got it got an Oscar for Philly. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You know, rules are made to be broken. <laughs> I guess and so. And good but editors know well, when they can get away with crossing yeah, the line. Oh yeah. Just like it, good it, Ghostbusters it, it, know when they can get away with crossing the stream. <laughs> Just saying. I didn't think that was a good breaking of that rule. <laughs> You might be right. But, you know, this movie was made for just over a million dollars. And it, it grossed $225 million <laughs> worldwide. That's insane. In 76. I mean, the profitability of this film, I can't even imagine. <laughs> you know, and Stallone had to buy back his dog with the money he got for the script. Imagine, I mean, however much money he made from this movie. I hope he had a good... Of course, the inevitable Rocky II, which, by the way, is a terrific sequel. Yeah, I don't really remember. Uh, and Rocky only, Three. I only remember parts of each Rocky, maybe. I got kicked off the set of Rocky Five. <laughs> of course you did. Well, they were shooting Rocky Five on the Warner Brothers lot when I worked there, and they were shooting literally right next to where my car was parked, yeah. where my parking space was. And so I was like, I wonder what they're shooting. And I went over, and it was the scene in Rocky Five. There's a alleyway fight with Tommy Gunn. And I just was standing there on the set. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, watching. And the first AD, like, comes over and said, who are you? And I introduced myself. I said, hey, I work in, for Bill Young in feature production over at Warner Brothers. Of course, it was one of the many times the next morning I was disciplined. You got busted. By my boss. <laughs> yeah, they, they kicked me off for the set. For dropping his name. They actually had to call. They called in to find out. I always use my name. But I no, thought you dropped your boss's name. I did drop my boss's name. I had to give myself some legitimacy. But I think Bill Bill he didn't Young like that. he found it very amusing because he's like, "Don't you want to go home?" He's like, "What? How long did you stay?" I said, "I stayed for a couple hours." Yeah, it's like the scene in La La Land where they're walking, they're walking, and they 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 watch a a filming of a scene. Yeah, it was like that. I'm not gonna leave. <laughs> of course, I was like 22 and I looked very I looked young. Yeah. And I was, you know, probably wearing some goofy 80s outfit. Mm hmm So, but yes, I did get to watch some of the fight choreography, and it was it was amazing. Very cool. It was amazing. But, uh, so, but this film, I, I mean, I every time I watch this movie, I love it. I, I mean, I, I love it's, this it's film. It's endearing. I mean, you know, it, it's very nostalgic. It, it reminds me of my childhood, because, you know, that's when I saw it, when I was young. And we all loved it, and we, of course we all imitated him, and, you know, um, yeah, it's a great underdog story. Um, you're just rooting for him the whole time. But you also really like the, you can tell from the very beginning, like when Rocky first goes into the pet store that he's smitten. I love the yes. way, and she she's smitten too, but she's hiding behind she's her glasses. She's very shy. She's very shy, and she's hiding behind everything, and like, I guess it's her sister or whatever, the owner of the store, yeah. she's like, go downstairs and, you know, go clean up the yeah. cat piss or whatever. So she, and, and she, like, they steal glances at each other. And, yeah, and he's and, always going in there. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I'm going to make up a joke for you tomorrow, you know. <laughs> it's so, it's so, I, everything about this movie is so, I mean, it's become classic. It's become a classic. But I can only imagine that the, the cynical uh, 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 purveyors of, of culture at the time, like the Vincent Canby's, <laughs> were looking at this movie going, Psst. You know, this is such a throwback to other movies like this. I mean, I, I it's, it, but it became a like populist. What? Well, you know, I don't know. I mean, what exactly what movies that they were, but they were, this movie from its from the get go. Even though they try and make I it, thought, I, there was even people that said it, it came you close. Might have, you might have just read the bad reviews from back then. No, I'm not saying most people absolutely loved. This they film. did. They did love it, but there were some people who even said that this borderline glorified gangsters. And I don't think that's true at all. Not like at the all. the whole thing is what there's is there's one gangster in it. Yeah, there's one gangster, but but he clearly means business. And Rocky's like, like he's in the neighborhood. I'm, like, I'm not gonna break your thumb, but come up with the seventy bucks. I mean, like he's putting himself on the line. Like there's no reason to break this dude's hand for seventy dollars. Right. And then the Joe Spinell's like, if I tell you to break, I need my I have my reputation uphold. I don't think it's pro gangster. Well, you can't be the you can't be the soft gangster, you know. I no, you can't. But then the idea that 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 you know, Apollo Creed, I love, Apollo Creed is a straight up villain in this movie. Like he starts out like he's a, he's, he's preying on the, the, I mean, if you, I'm sure, especially now looking back at whatever social justice warrior today, like when Apollo Creed comes out dressed as George Washington, I'm like, oh, 
somebody's gonna like write about how Rocky was putting the black man and and casting him as a slave owner and uh, some such BS. But at the time, I love the fact that uh, Apollo Creed's a bad guy. Like he's a bad guy. Like he's he didn't get his fight on the Fourth of July. The, I don't. I didn't see him as a bad he's, guy. No, he's preying on. Like he, he thinks he's like, oh, let forget. He's just, he just thinks he's amazing, which he is amazing. He is amazing. But he, he's a he's, beautiful. He's, he's kind of he's kind of arrogant. But I wouldn't call him a bad guy. Well, he look. He, they're clearly playing on Muhammad Ali's persona. Yeah. You know, and for and, sure. and, and, and and but but he. What, what's what's really interesting is is, you know, he is a villain. Like he is, he is, he is. It's David and Goliath. I mean, he's Goliath, right? And and they they but they do a really good job, even though he's a villain, you like him, yeah. You like Apollo Creed, like because I I don't know if that's because we're conditioned. Everyone loved Muhammad Ali, you know, and they get Joe Fra. I'm because Joe Frazier plays plays himself and all that, but but I really do like the fact that I don't think the movie would have worked. If you didn't have the only thing, uh, you had to have somebody that is larger than life, and I think one of Carl Weathers, one of his great strengths in this movie, is he's he he takes it a little over the top, but we buy it because we've seen Muhammad Ali. Because right. if you look at the rest of this movie, it's so gritty, yeah, and it's so. But Apollo Creed is, and they <clears throat> if they didn't do that, I don't think the movie would have worked as well. Because you right. you needed well, to have you this. You needed to feel like this guy is so confident that he's not even paying attention to what is going to happen. You right. Know? He's like so confident that you know he just picked some guy out of a book and he liked it because his nickname was the Italian Stallion. He's like, ooh, that'll sound great on the poster. Right. But what's Apollo so, Creed versus the Italian Stallion? But in a way, it also sort of underlines the class struggle. I mean, if you look at if you look at Apollo Creed, he's always wearing nice suits, you know, and he's well spoken, and he has a team. Well, yeah, he's he's the, he's the champion. He's the CEO of a business, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 basically, Rocky Balboa is the working man. So if you you could see it as a whole, there's a whole the whole economic struggle is built into that. It flips race in America around. There's all of this stuff that's in the movie, but it doesn't hit you over the head. But it's definitely there. Mm -hmm. It's definitely there, and and watching it now, I think it just adds to the effectiveness of the movie. Absolutely. Did anything surprise you about watching it again? Um, you said you hadn't seen it. In a I while. hadn't seen it. I really didn't remember. I just remembered that there was a romance. He was in love with Adrian, and I thought I liked that part when I was younger. So. I, I thought, oh, this would be a good romance movie for Friday. <laughs> did you did you did you find the romance to be believable? Yeah, I did. I did. I mean, you know, Rocky comes off as this really simple guy who is not not particularly uh, intelligent. I mean, it's not like he's a genius or anything, and um, he's kind of a simple guy. And so, um, I, I think the the way he goes about wooing this girl is very realistic you know he's like flirting with her and he's telling her jokes and he comes and sees her at her work every day and i i just thought it was charming i thought you know the way he was you know and then he he was completely in in love with her because she, he never even looked at other girls like this was the girl like she was the girl and he was going to pursue her and she was extremely shy and that didn't even deter him he was determined that you know, and she's very, she was very plain looking at the beginning, but that didn't even matter to him either. Um, I love when he complains to Polly. Like, why doesn't your sister talk to me? Yeah. You know, I don't understand. He's like smitten with her and, and she's just this Get plain, her to talk to me. shy girl who won't even talk to him. <laughs> and uh, what did you think of his relationship with Mickey? Yeah, I thought that was really great too. Um, I mean, they have that great confrontation scene where Mickey... Yeah, well... You know, he's kind of annoyed because after he's chosen to do this fight, then everybody wants to help him or, you know, do something for him. And, and, and he's annoyed when uh, Adrian's brother is constantly trying to do that. And he's an alcoholic, so sometimes he's, like, raging about it. And then the next minute he's asking him nicely, and the next minute he's raging again. 
Uh, but he's so annoyed by that. And then, you know, and then Mickey shows up at his door and is like, I want to be your manager. And he's just like, oh, my God. You know, <laughs> he's like, what? He's so annoyed. And um, basically, you know, he hides in the bathroom, hoping that he'll leave. And when he does leave, then he goes on this rant. Um, but as soon as he's over ranting, of course, he he realizes the value of having him in his corner. So he goes out there and... And he runs after Mickey. <laughs> he runs after him. I thought that was great. It was very realistic. It's It was felt like the way somebody like that would react. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things about the reason, like you said, about the editing in this movie... Yeah. There's something that... I think that cannot be stressed enough about the editorial in this film, and that is the training montage. Oh, with, with right. the, the combination, by, by the way, Bill with Conti... The great music. Bill Conti, who scored this movie, the entire budget of the score of this film, meaning for all the musicians, all the recording sessions, whatever, Bill Conti got paid $25,000. You're kidding, because the, the music is iconic. I mean, we all know the Rocky music. Well, yeah, absolutely. The, the, but the gonna fly now and that, but that montage, the workout montage, is is now. I don't know. Like I've never seen. Somebody needs to go back and do somebody on YouTube. Maybe they already did this. Uh, a history of the montage, the sports montage, <laughs> not necessarily the military montage, like Rambo. I mean, getting ready and First Blood Part Two, but. Stallone is the master of these montages. I mean, yeah. Rocky Four is almost all a montage, but the montage of this when he's getting ready, it, you can't help but like it makes you want to go work out. I'm doing my workout routine tomorrow. I'm starting. I'm gonna be like Rocky. <laughs> you, you're gonna drink uh, five raw eggs. No, that was another iconic moment. It was, and it's all one shot. There's no cutting away. It's one single yep. shot, and Stallone's cracking the eggs, cracking the eggs, and then cracking slurping the eggs it and down. slurping them down. I mean, it's <laughs> it's great. And uh, you, you know the running where he finally breaks breaks into a left a sprint as the steady cam or whatever yeah, is, so is in the iconic shot of him going up the steps of the Museum of Art like, and, and the steady cam shot when it comes around him and you see all of downtown Philadelphia yeah, behind him and he I've, raises his I've arms up. I've been up those stairs many times and yes, the view from up there is gorgeous, seeing the boulevard and it's beautiful. And and then of course, I mean the the. One thing I always forget is how fast, how quick the fight is. The fight does not... Yeah, and it, I, I appreciate that. I, I don't want to linger on the fighting. That's not something I like. Well, but if you go... It's interesting. If you watch the evolution of the Rocky movies, like in Creed, for instance, Ryan Coogler's Creed, there's pretty much three fights. And the first fight is almost done as a one -er, which is a, a very difficult thing to pull off because fake fighting... Mm -hmm. is hard very hard to do and they oh, do a I great job with the fake fighting they do. i mean and stallone was the fight choreographer yeah in, wow. in this film and the the um uh, uh the fighting is is great but it is and i love it like they, they're just like round one two three four five six seven and then... well one of the one of the things that i always it made me i have an involuntary i did it didn't didn't happen to me the first time I was watching this, but subsequently, whenever I watch this movie, there is a part when I start crying. Uh -huh. Like I literally cannot. Like it's a, it, and it is the end of round two, the beginning of round three, and and the reason is because a piece of music called "Going the Distance" oh. kicks in, and it's it's. I mean, I say the words "Going the Distance," and I I literally <laughs> have a physiological reaction. When that music starts, dun 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 dun, and and it's so every time I hear it, I'm like, and then it it plays through the piece of music, plays through all the way to the end of the fight. It does. So and and it's I always wondered like, what it it when 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 the editors and Stallone like they heard that piece of music, I want to know like. When you got that piece of music and started laying picture, because an editor, when you get a piece of music that's your score, your and you get to start editing picture to music, it's it's like the best drug in the world when you yeah. start putting up because it's it's incredible it's that emotional element that yeah. you're injecting in there. And this this the whole end fight uh, and the way it builds. I mean, it jumps it jumps to the fourteenth round 
pretty quickly. I mean, you yeah, get from, which I appreciate. You got, yeah, well, <laughs> and of course, but I love it because at the beginning, you know, they're fine. They're not bloody, whatever. Uh, and then when you get to the, you know, towards the end, like he can't even see and they have to slice his eye open. Another and iconic like, moment. And they're all messed up. And <laughs> Well, another, another thing that I think is really hard that they really do well is they really set up the idea that Apollo Creed believes that this is going to be a cakewalk. Right. You know, and at first, indeed, it looks like it might be. Yeah. And and they did a really good job of, of making it believable. It's not... Yeah. They don't make Rocky... Like, Rocky gets pummeled. He does. But, I mean, he takes out Apollo Creed. He gets him on the ground. He does. And by doing that, even though the fight is not long... Like, there are other fights in, in the Rocky movies that are much longer than this one. I think the fight in Rocky 2 is Too longer. Long. And then they both fall down in Rocky, which is gr- it's. I love Rocky too. It's 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 just it's a I different. Don't remember. It's a lot more. It's a different movie. I know I've seen it, but Rocky I, two I couldn't have existed without Rocky one. <laughs> you know, it's. But I would say Rocky two is the Empire Strikes Back of the, of the of the Rocky franchise, and Rocky three is absolutely the Return of the Jedi, of, <laughs> of and uh, and Rocky four is pretty much you know oh Attack gosh. of the Clones. <laughs> Of the Rocky franchise, but the 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 it, it, the way the fight works, the ebbs and the flows, and the this and the that, and and I love like Stu Nahan, the the whole the nobody could believe that Rocky is still standing, and he's he's told Talia Shire, he's told Adrian, he's like, I just want to go the distance, yeah, because no one has ever gone the distance with Apollo Creed, yeah, yeah, and and you know you you see on Carl Weathers' face that he's his character suddenly realizes I'm up against something I've never been up against before. And you see that even though he's angry about it, there is this respect too. He's he he grudgingly comes around. Yeah. And and it's it's it, 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 it his if he wasn't like I just love the way his character changes during the fight. Like you know Rocky's gonna go the distance. You know that he Yeah. But Carl Weathers' yes. performance, like you can see it in his face. He does such a good job of coming around to first of all, grudging respect, like, ugh. And then by the end of the fight, like he can't you know, he can't Yeah. It, it's I love it. I mean it's it's I don't know how long it took them to, to shoot that fight scene. I mean I don't I didn't read up on it, I probably could have, but I it, it's so I, I, it's just a great bit of filmmaking, and it's a great... The two of those guys in that ring, man, they act the hell out of that. They do. And it feels very real. It feels so like they, real. They did go 15 rounds. I mean, it really did, and it's... You... you it, oh, I love... It's just so good. It's And the ending is so... It's funny, because they don't milk it. Like, I always think that they milk the ending, but they yeah, don't. It no. happens very abruptly. It happen- yeah, it happens, and... Then it's the end of the fight and it's tied and then he's calling for Adrian and she comes and it ends on I love you and I love you too. And they hug and she kisses him. And that's him, it. And it's a freeze frame. Yep. And then the credits roll. I mean, everything about this movie is low key, even though it's, it's the emotional, the emotions there, but the filmmaking is low key. It's not over the top and, and it's, it's so economical. Um, that I'm, I'm always, I watch this movie and you, you forget how good it really is. Yeah. It's a really good film. It, it's, it's a great film. And, um, that's why it won best picture and that's why it has seven sequels. Wow. Yes. Seven. Interesting though. It was up against, um, I mean, it came out the same year as a, a bunch of really great films. Yeah. Like the network was so ne- network. Yeah. Yeah. Network is so. I mean, I would say, look, do I think Network is a better film than Rocky? I do. But I'll tell you something. What about Taxi the Taxi and, and, Driver? And, uh, and Taxi it Driver. Came out the same year too. I understand that. And those from an intellectual standpoint, <laughs> from a, a ideological, political, sociological, Network and Taxi Driver, I would say are better films. But but nothing has the heart that this movie has. I mean, the problem with Taxi Driver and Network is they were deeply cynical movies about where true. America was. That is true. And this film, after the, it, this is a catharsis. Yes. This was, this was, America did not want to see, we, uh, Americans were, were so awash in cynicism between the, 
the me 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 of the 70s and and horrible album oriented rock that was trying to make us all happy uh afternoon delight starland vocal band sky rockets and fly come on and, 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 no. on the music of the 70s anyway what the hell? i'm just saying we had a lot of we had a lot of weird stuff going on but this this movie cut through the cacophony of all that and it was it was straight to the heart of what it means to be a human being what it means to be an american and what it means to be a citizen of the planet earth what it means to be a part of the human race yeah, that's true. And that's why it won Best Picture when it did. I can see that now. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And, and, you know, a million dollar movie. A million dollar movie. Is there anything you didn't like about this movie? Um, um, it was a little slow at the beginning, I think. What? Like, you know what? That's just because it's, it's an older film and I'm so used to now things being so quick. Um... But I don't really have any complaints about it. Um, I like this film. I chose it. Well, I, I know you did. <laughs> but I, I definitely think that while people would say, like, the the look, the movie poster mm-hmm. was, was Talia Shire and, and Sylvester Stallone walking. It's a black and white poster walking together. So right. the, the I think that... If you might, if you don't think the romance is one of the great, it's not Ilsa and Rick and Casablanca, but I think this film is a, a romantic movie about America, about the heart and soul of of America, the 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 good people of the United States. Yeah, and, I mean, it felt it felt like a real little romance um, that any normal regular person would have, you know. Yeah. No, and I also think it's a celebration of the working class of the United States. The people that built this country. Yes. You know, that, that it's so... It's a love letter to them as well. It is. It is. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I know that there are some people... How is it 8 o'clock? We started at 7.30. Oh, that's right. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> that makes sense. I'm like, wait, what? What? That makes sense. Um, so let's see who is here. Uh, Julius Goodwin is here. Thank you, Julius. Once thank again, thank you for the thank dude you for wine. The wine. Mm. <laughs> Julius says, "I thought weekends were supposed to be romantic movie nights. What's romantic about an ex bookie?" Who, when he's not getting called a bum for half the movie by a demented senior citizen posing as a boxing trainer, spends the other half catching headshots. <laughs> wow. Well, you, this wasn't romantic enough for you? Wow. Okay. That's pretty damn this funny. That's good to know. That is pretty damn <laughs> funny. I'm going to pick something really mushy <laughs> uh, for next Friday. Uh... <laughs> Noodles says, sup y'all, pretty buzzed off some Boda Box Pinot Noir over here. (laughs) Classy, I know. So apparently Sylvester wrote Rocky in three and a half days. I've heard that. I call bullshit. (laughs) I know there isn't too much in the story, but still, hey, you know what? I I've known people that have written scripts. You know, you sit down if you are if the if the muse flowing. I I could see that he could do it that quickly. Yeah. No, that's I. I believe that that's a possibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean M sends in a super chat. What about Richard Gere and the hot dog? The hot Does dog. Richard Gere have a bit part in this movie in eating a hot dog? I, I really I did not know that. I believe that that could be true. Oh, I missed it. Um, I I don't know, huh. Sean. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Alexander Wilson says Joe Frazier. One of the greatest boxers of all time, who's from Philly and cameos in the movie, inspired a lot of scenes in the movie. It's true. Frazier used to punch meat in a frozen locker, and he would run up the Philadelphia Museum of Art steps, which was in the movie. Mm -hmm. By the way, and Joe Frazier looks great in this film. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 you know, there is a lot of Muhammad Ali in Apollo Creed. Yeah, for sure. You know, he, he, he looks like a butterfly and stings like a bee. Yes. Remember that song? Muhammad. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Anyway, when you were a kid, did you ever have the uh, Muhammad Ali Superman comic book? No. Oh, well. I mean, Muhammad Ali, I, when, when, when I was a kid, everybody wanted to be Muhammad Ali. Oh, yeah, I know. He was like the coolest guy who lived. He was. Ever lived. 
mm-hmm. uh, ever lived. So and I got to meet him. You, oh yeah, tell the story. Oh yeah, okay. So um, when we lived in Michigan, he actually lived in a small town that I lived in in Michigan, and um, I worked at a flower shop, and he would order flowers for his wife all the time, and we would get to go to his house and deliver these flowers. Did he ever come out and talk about Joe Frazier? He didn't talk about Joe Frazier. I mean, you Joe know, you Frazier. just say hi and whatever. You know. Do you have... talk about the thriller in Manila? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, you couldn't be a kid in the 70s and not want to be Muhammad Ali. It's true. I mean, I mean, the kids, everyone wanted to. Everyone talked about him all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. He was huge. He was huge. <laughs> um, uh, Timbula the Spider Monkey. Hey, Tim. It kind of saddens me where this and the Rambo franchise went. Both originals are masterpieces, but their franchises turned into dumb action films. I loved Creed. Creed is, Creed is, a, Creed is a brilliant... I've talked about it so much on my show. Uh, it is a brilliant example of how to do a franchise correctly. Uh, I love Creed, um, and I have said, you know, I, I, Ryan Coogler, people are like, well, you know, he got to direct Black Panther because he's black, and I'm like, that's maybe, I'm sure, part of it. Ryan Coogler was handpicked by Kevin Feige because Creed is one of the great universe-building franchise movies ever, when you think about it. And and what he did was he... He, he paid homage and he he, he, he worshipped at the altar that Stallone had built. He gave Stallone his second best role as Rocky, earning him an Academy Award nomination. You cannot say enough about how Creed is an amazing franchise picture. And Ryan Coogler is, I think, a master filmmaker. And that was really only his second movie. I'm uh, great. But no other Rocky movie had the emotion this one had. Well, Tim, I agree. But remember, when they made this movie, there was never a thought that they were going to make a sequel. And back then, you know, sequels weren't necessarily, other than Godfather 2, which was an anomaly, they didn't make uh, a lot of sequels. And I have to say, I have to say, I think Rocky 2 is a very worthy sequel. I think Rocky 3 becomes, I mean, they, where could they go once they've made Rocky 1 and 2? Rocky 3 is silly, but it's so much fun. Rocky Three is so much fun. I mean, Clubber Lang, and you've got, I mean, come on, it's, it's, uh, it's wrestling. It, it, but you're right. I mean, Rocky Four is utterly ridiculous. Rocky Five is just not very good, and but then Rocky Balboa is certainly not just a dumb action film. And then Creed, Creed Two is not as good, obviously, but um, still. Um, uh. I, I do think that that Rocky Two though is 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 a better movie than most people might give it credit for. Uh, Alexander Wilson goes on to say a lot of native people from Philly say why is there a statue of Rocky, a fictional character in Philly, when Joe <laughs> Frazier is from Philly who beat Muhammad Ali. <laughs> also, true. Frazier said that Ali was the inspiration for Apollo Creed. Uh, no, he it absolutely is. I, I mean, look, I think I think that. That's a very valid question to ask, but I would say that that you know sometimes uh, fiction. Not this is not to take away from Joe Frazier at all, but but the idea of legends and myths um, have something to do with our collective unconsciousness. And Joe Frazier himself was was uh, a larger than life real guy, but. I mean, I think that that Rocky is Rocky represents all of boxing. You know, Rocky represents everything about that sport. The the great pugilist, pugilist, pugilist. Um, he, as a fictional character, Rocky says something about the entire sport of boxing. And and if anything, Rocky, I, I think would would bring a lot of people into the sport. Like if you're a kid and you start watching. Rocky, I think that then you'll be you'll sit down and watch fights with your dad, you know, and and yeah, totally. I mean, I think sometimes iconic fictional characters are what make people inspire people to get interested in history and yeah. real life. But that's not to take away. I think it's a good point, but um, remember, there's a reason why Joe Frazier agreed to cameo in this movie. 
So it's even Joel Frazier saying he anoints... Joe Frazier is, is the thing that gives this movie its final blessing. The <laughs> fact that Joe Frazier is in this movie. Yeah. And with a grin, if you... I forget, uh, how every time I see this movie, he's got one big grin on his face. He's like, I'm in a movie. <laughs> yes. he's, he's very excited to he be there. He excited. looks great. And he's, he really adds something to the film. And, and that was a cool... That was a, that's another, like, how did they, get to, who called Joe Frazier up and asked him to do it? Did they have to negotiate yeah, with him? Yeah, I'm like, wondering. Uh, you know, I, I, it how was. How should they pay him? Uh, again, though, that's another moment where it, you, you get a, you can't help but have a smile on your face. Because he looks so happy to be there. He does. He's probably thinking, I can't believe I'm in a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, but uh, no, you're absolutely right. Um, Doc Savage is here. I dug Rocky a lot, but in my opinion, Stallone's monologue at the end of First Blood is his best work. <laughs> By the way, I fought a guy to the song Survivor once. Legend. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wouldn't that be Eye of the Tiger? <laughs> By Survivor? Just want to make that clear. Carl Weathers is here. <laughs> Carl Weathers says, Wish this cinematic universe was like Marvel so I could come back to the Creed movies. Laugh out loud. Carl, you're dead. Uh, Yvonne Drago broke you in the ring. I, he was a fighter from the Soviet Union. He fought all of his life, and he never loses. Soon he will fight Rocky Balboa, and the world will see his defeat. If you guys want to see a great teaser trailer, go watch the Rocky IV trailer. My name is Drago. I am a fighter from the Soviet Union. It's awesome. I kind of remember that one. I fight all of my life and I never lose. <laughs> Soon I fight Rocky Balboa. Um, but that movie's ridiculous. Uh, but you know what? Carl Weathers, he got to come back in The Mandalorian playing a badass. And uh, he's, he's working for the mouse. So that's not so bad. And he was Action Jackson after this. So with vanity. Come on, man. Come on. Um, Alexander Wilson comes back and says, Related to movies, Muhammad Ali watched Sugar Ray vs. Jake LaMotta over and over again, which was shown in Scorsese's Raging Bull as the answer to beat Sonny Liston. Sugar Ray and the Joe Lewis generation didn't like Ali at first. Yeah, I mean, I can understand. Look, Cassius Clay, later Muhammad Ali, uh, I think that a lot of people, he might have, his arrogance might have been a little off putting. I mean, but it was so, like, I thought that was, like, when you're a little kid and you're watching Muhammad Ali, yeah. his voice, every, mm -hmm. everything he did, you just, you had to love that guy. And, and I think his arrogance, look, he could put his money where his mouth was. <laughs> yeah. Um, or his mouth where his money was. So, I mean, you know, that was, uh, that was good stuff. But, again, I, I think, look, kids, little kids, suddenly you became interested in boxing because of Rocky. It's true. You know, you, you might not have known much about the sport, but... Um, mm -hmm. um, just Your Average Joe sends in a super chat and says, Rocky has the best story. Rocky IV, I bought into the cheese of it and love the soundtrack and the entertainment factor. Mm. Part 2 has my favorite scene. There's one thing I want you to do for me. Oh, oh, <laughs> win. That's, what, that's when Adrian says that... And then, of course, again, I, you said that, and I, I get that whoosh. I'm like, I remember, goodness, come on, man. That was the same. When she says win, I, I mean, it, and, and the way they play that out, even in Rocky II, there's still verisimilitude. It's still, like the scene, they, they do the riff when he's running up the stairs of the museum, but yeah. when he's jogging, all the kids of Philadelphia start following oh, yeah, I remember him. remember that scene. And yes. by the end, there's hundreds of kids, yes. you know, following him, running with him. Come on. Yeah, I mean, that is such a movie scene. Like, I don't think that would ever happen in real life. But it, you're, you're watching it, and you completely have bought well, into... he was very connected to his neighborhood. He was always, like, saying hi to the kids and talking to them and stuff. Yeah. So, maybe. But, I mean, that scene is is so great. <laughs> and when she says, yeah, it's... it's it's Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah. I mean, you gotta love... Uh, the Rocky franchise might have its ups and downs... And it's very funny that they've made eight movies about a boxer, who, right? A boxer over his forty-five year career. I mean, <laughs> right? What boxer goes through forty-five years? Stallone's like in his seventies, you know. And it's it's we're still watching Rocky movies, it's true. which I think is actually kind of cool to see a fictional character grow in in his fictional universe 
spanning his whole life. Yeah. Which they did in Star Trek, and I wish that they would on- continue to honor that. Like, don't... Yeah. Don't... Some, they should never remake Rocky. If they remake Rocky, no. we know the world is... We're, we're a worthless species, and we, <laughs> we deserve to all die out. If Hollywood says, you know, let's remake Rocky, we're done. Yeah, that's not a good idea. No, but somebody's going to... I'm sure someone suggested it. Oh, man. Come on, man. The thing is, you couldn't remake Rocky. I mean, you you literally couldn't remake it now because it would be too pretty. They couldn't... Yeah, it, would, it, it wouldn't would, feel real and... No. 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 Uh, Alexander Wilson says, A great movie that has never been made is the comeback of George Foreman who ended Joe Frazier's career in a brutal fashion he did, then was humiliated by Ali, came back and beat a man 20 years younger to be the champ and vanquished his Ali demons. I think that's a great... That's a great... Has no one made a movie about... I mean, not a fictional movie, but has no one made like a... Is There There must be a documentary about George Foreman. And then, of course, he becomes America's great grill man. Yes. So he has a second career. But that's a, that's a great point. I mean... You know, I, I think it's 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 interesting that I feel that the people that love boxing, uh, there is a there is a great respect for boxing, and now there's a lot of people like Manny Pacquiao sort of mattered to his homeland to the people there, and, yeah. And I, I feel in a way that boxing is a sport. I hope it doesn't get lost to history. Yeah, I know less about boxing now than I did back when I was a kid. But there's, yeah, but I, I mean, I think because, you know, one of the things that we had when we were kids was you had people like, um, um, you know, um, why am I drawing a blank on his name? Oh my God, I, mean, I, can, I can hear his voice in my head. What? Uh, the, the, the ABC Sports, you know. The, oh, yeah. Um, Here we are. Yes. But come on, why am uh, I drawing um, a blank on his name? It's on the tip of my tongue. I know. It's uh, uh, come on. Um, 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 uh, why am I drawing a blank on his? I know his name. His name starts with an L, doesn't it? I don't. His last name. I, why am I see his face? I can't believe I'm drawing. Come a blank. on, guys, help us out. What's his name? Um, the the sports guy. The sportscaster. You know. His voice. Here we are. Well, he was like, we had a guy, we had a, why am I, like, I want to say Monty Norman, Monty. No. <laughs> it's not that. Doesn't anyone no. know? Um, anyway. No. It was, it was, it was him, like Muhammad Ali had, uh, it, with ABC Sports, had this man that loved him. And like Billy Crystal loved Muhammad Ali too. So yeah. there were advocates that, um, Howard, Howard Cosell. This is Howard Cosell. How could we not know his name? Howard Cosell, of course. I mean, you grew up with Howard Cosell, and I don't think any man has ever loved another man more than Howard Cosell loved Muhammad Ali. It's true. And 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 so we had, as a kid, I remember, because he was like the funniest sounding adult. Here he we are. You know, and it, Howard Cosell. Well, it was synonymous with, with sports. Like, when you heard his voice, you knew, like, this is... Oh. The way he would speak, it just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's so good. Uh, Baruz Herolev, uh, if I mispronounce your last name, I, uh, Herolev, uh, do you think in this modern age, an MMA movie could turn into what the Rocky franchise was or is? Love you, Rob. Well, Baruz, that's a really good question. And you know, there's been a lot of MMA movies. I I'll tell you something. I'm not going to say never, but... There's something about boxing that's different from MMA. There's, I think there's something, it's kind of like the difference between skiing and snowboarding. You know, snowboarding is never going to be as elegant, and it's never going to be as, I think, um, it's just a different thing. MMA is faster, more brutal, not that fights can't be brutal, but but it's, it's more about, there's more of an edge to it like the, the boxing certainly is very violent but I, I don't know I, I I just think that there's something less classical about MMA fighting now I know all you MMA fans are going what <laughs> but I, I I just think that boxing has something in it that is 
divine, maybe? I don't know. Maybe I'm out of my mind. But that's a really good question. I just think that the, the MMA fighters always seem to be more angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more, more, more guys that want to kill somebody. Like, you never get the idea that, unless you're Ivan Drago from Russia, that boxers want to actually kill somebody. Yeah. But right. MMA fighters, <laughs> they've got bloodlust. Yeah. And maybe that's why you could never make a movie like a Rocky. But I could be wrong. And by the way, I this is a good question. I'm going to ask John Campia this. I think this is a really good question to ask John because he knows a lot more about MMA fighting than I do. But that's a really good question. I don't question. know anything about MMA fighting. Um, Doc Savage is here and says, this is for invoking the name Vanity, my childhood goddess. Awesome movie pick tonight. Thanks again, guys. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Vanity is one of, I mean, in my mind, one of the most smoking hot women ever. She was a prince girl. She was in, of course, the front woman in Vanity 6. Vanity 6 is so sweet. It's time to fix your clock uh, from 19, off the 1999 album. But if you really want to see a wacky movie, if you've never seen this movie, there is a movie called Never Too Young to Die that stars George Lazenby, John Stamos, Vanity, and Gene Simmons <laughs> as a hermaphrodite. I kid you not. And boy, there's scenes of vanity in a bikini that will melt your screen. I kid you not. So, cheers to you. Let's drink to Doc Savage and Vanity. Sorry, I know. You're like, you're, you're asking me to drink to a girl? She became a Christian, though, and left the business. <laughs> okay. Doesn't get any hotter than Vanity, though. Um, oh, Just Your Average Joe asks about, what do you think of Mike Tyson coming back? We saw a commercial for that. Coming back Mike to... Tyson's going to fight. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. Isn't he like 50 He's or... He's like six, almost 60. What? What? That, that, that's wrong. You should never allow a 60-year-old man to fight. Isn't that dangerous? Couldn't he like get seriously injured? I kind of want to see him take some dudes out. What, what, is he going to fight, like, young 20-year-olds? I, I don't think so, but I think if he did, he'd beat him. <laughs> that dude's old. But he's Mike Tyson. I'm concerned. <laughs> I am. Uh, it's probably not the best idea, but I'm not going to lie. I don't think that's a good idea at all. I mean, it's kind of like The Dark Knight Returns. When Batman finally came back... He's, he's going to get some serious internal injuries and... That, Look, can, that can't be good. Ever since Mike Tyson played himself in The Hangover, I have all the love in the world for him. <laughs> I have all the... Who doesn't love Mike Tyson? Yeah, that's why he shouldn't fight. I know. Now it's probably... Somebody's going to come after me that's not politically correct. Look, I understand. Well, it's not politically Well, because, correct. you know, it's not like his relationships with women have been the most celebrated in the world. He was oh, in jail. that's true. I understand. So you can't... But... but that is true just gonna say i i you can't not like i mean i like mike tyson and you know what after everything he went through the guy's always smiling he's always <laughs> he's always he's he's he, he talk about somebody who's persevered through life things have been bad but he's come back i uh iron mike when's he supposed to i don't know <laughs> i don't know um <laughs> Steve, it's a good question, just your average Joe. But I, I'm gonna, I'm, that I'm. Just blows my mind that this I, I am a uh, advocate of Mike Tyson. Sixty-year-old dude I, is gonna. <laughs> you know what? It just proves that your your life story. If you're an American, your life story is never it never has to be over. You never have to give up. Uh, Steve Foley says, "Adrian, <laughs> I'll be here waiting for you, Rocky Balboa. How about I stay here and you fight?" <laughs> That's a good line too. It's a good line. It's a good one. <laughs> um, Michael Preston sends in a super chat and says Rocky Balboa was almost as good as Rocky and as for fame, pain, and sweat was the opening of the TV show yes, my mom loved it um, fame, pain oh, fame, fame pain, and sweat the was fame. the opening of the TV show yes, yes, That's. I'm glad your mom loved it I like that show, it's great, fame was great I want to see that show now I know, now you gotta watch it how can I get my hands on the show? um I don't know. I don't know if it, maybe it's available. I don't know. That's a good question. 
Uh, Alexander Wilson's back and says, also a great boxing movie was David O. Russell's The Fighter. I have The Fighter on Blu-ray. I love The Fighter. It's I've really good. That. It should be next on the list to watch. I watched uh, Mickey Ward fighting growing up. Also, Vanity, man, it got sticky in my room as a kid. Oh. All right, Alexander Wilson. TMI. <laughs> she was so fine, and so is Sheila E. Oh yeah, I, I'm. I am. I am with you a hundred percent. And as a diehard, I mean, as a diehard Prince fan, let me. I, by the way, I got this at a Prince show. It's very expensive, but I got it anyway because I love Prince so much. Um, Prince's taste in women was pretty much second to none. So, uh, rest in peace. His, his purple badness. But, you know, he brought he was the first person that brought vanity to the world. So, yes, it got sticky in your room. I know exactly what you mean. Uh, Noodles sends in a tip and says, Want a mushy pick for next week? Yes. Superman as a playwright, Somewhere in Time. Somewhere in Time is a very mushy, romantic movie. Have you ever seen Somewhere in Time? Have I? I don't know. Christopher Reeves sure. goes back in time. Jane Seymour, you'd remember it if you saw it. Oh, oh yeah, they write letters to each other, and then he goes back in time, or no? Well, something. They like write that. letters, and the, she finds letters in her desk. Something like that, right? And they're in different times. Yeah. Oh, then yes, I've seen it. Okay, well we should watch it. Okay. Alexander Wilson, Mike Tyson, <laughs> former undisputed heavyweight champ, who debuted in '85 is fighting Roy Jones Jr., former undisputed light heavyweight... Cha is it light heavyweight? Light... Uh, who debuted in 89 are fighting each other. I have no idea, but I want to watch that so bad. <laughs> well, so they're not that far apart. Four years apart. I think we're going to get to see that. I think that'll be pretty damn cool. Okay. Um... Well, so listen, uh, we've got the... Uh, we got to we got to finish off the, the wine. Um... The pink wine for dudes. The pink wine for dudes. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Do you think, is Rocky a dude movie, or do you think girls can like it just as much as guys? Um, I think it's it's kind of a dude movie. Um, but because I, I liked it when I was a young kid, I think if you saw it when you were young, it could be likable by all. <laughs> Right. I mean, I don't know. I uh, I think women could like this movie. Uh, I do too. I mean, obviously they can. <laughs> obviously I, I, they did. I mean, it made a lot of money at the box office. So. No, it, it it certainly did. And you know what's really interesting? I mean, what with this franchise? Like, if you go back and you watch Creed, if you watch this and then you watch Creed. I think that would be an. Inter I've never done that. That'd be an interesting double bill. I kind of want to go watch Creed now, um, but I. Uh, I mean, the Rocky franchise, as a as a as a franchise, you would never have thought this movie would have. They would they would make seven sequels to this movie. Yeah. I mean, how many movies <laughs> rate seven sequels? I mean, the original That's Planet of the Apes. There's only five. Yeah. You know, the original Star Wars. I mean, there's been more, but it took a long time. I mean, Rocky has sort of been a constant. Throughout the last forty-five years of America, you know, a lot. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Rocky is no longer a franchise. Rocky is a genre. It is. When people think of underdog stories, it's, it's Rocky-esque. That's true. That's true. So we um, could do Million Dollar Baby. Oh, that movie! That's hardcore. <laughs> Willow Yang just showed her mom. That's been a topic on Rob's. Oh, Bages. really? Yeah. Her There's her mom. There's a boxing movie for you. Oh man. Um. Yes, like Alexander, I want to see that so bad. Our, our friend Austin Hernandez is here. <laughs> hey guys, the Rocky franchise is near and dear to my heart because I've watched every Rocky movie with my dad, who I've met. It pulls on a lot of heartstrings for me. You know, um, Augie, the, uh, the um, Ryan Coogler, I heard him talk on NPR about when his mother had cancer, his father and him would watch the Rocky movies to make themselves feel better. And that's where he got the idea for Creed. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I like that story. Uh, 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 the cheesemonger of the uh, Burnett work, Kaz <laughs> Graphics, is here and says, Rumor has it Jamie Foxx is playing Mike Tyson in a movie. I've heard that. Uh, he's been posting pics on his Twitter. I am a huge, hmm. huge Jamie Foxx fan. 
Yeah. I think Jamie Foxx is... I mean, he does a lot of things. Jamie Foxx is loving life. He has a really good time. You can always tell. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a huge fan of him. I've never met Jamie Foxx, but he looks like the kind of guy you'd be fast friends with and right? would hang out with. Yeah, he seems like a really fun guy. But I also think he's an incredible actor. He is. And he's got this new superhero movie that's going to be on Netflix where you take a pill and you can be a superhero for five minutes. Oh, very cool. It's called like the Power Exchange or something. Ooh. And it looks great. I, I mean, I, I if, if he's going to play uh, uh, Mike Tyson, I believe he is. I think he's a good casting. For what? I, He's going to play Mike Tyson in a movie. What movie? Probably a movie called Tyson. I don't know. Oh. So I think he could do it. I mean, he's going to have to. He's yeah, he he's, he's a little it. thinner. I don't know how he can he's to get have that to bulk bulky. Up. Yeah. I mean, he's going to have to look. And he might be a little too tall to play Tyson, but I don't care. I, I'll watch him in anything. Well, the height doesn't matter. I mean, in a movie, you can with a camera, you can, you know, yeah, fudge that. And I have I like boxing movies in general. Raging Bull, Million Dollar Baby, Ali, you know, when um, um, Will Smith played Muhammad Ali. I didn't think he'd be able to pull that off, but he did. He did. I mean, and Michael Mann, not one of my favorite Michael Mann movies, but I like it anyway. The Fighter, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone sends in a tip and said, Tyson <laughs> should fight me in the next installment of the franchise. I could take him. <laughs> Well, you're even older than Tyson, so hmm, I don't know. He could take him. Know. I mean, you know. Of course, then again, I mean, how old is Sylvester Stallone? Sylvester Stallone he's only like plays 70, a fighter. He's like seventy. He's like seventy-four or something. Yeah, and I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, I, me, me neither. Uh, Philip Alvarez says, "Watch Rocky Two for the bromance." Well, that's another thing I like about the Rocky franchise. Is the bromance that develops between Apollo Creed and Rocky? Ding, ding, ding! I love that. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, 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 uh, and that's that's another great scene where, like in Rocky Three, when Apollo Creed and and Rocky are running on the beach together. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's so good. Yeah, no, that's great. I love, I love when they highlight uh, friendships between men. I think that's um. That's re it's really important for guys to have good friends. I agree. And it's nice to see. And their friendship is great. I just don't, I don't, I never like the fact that Apollo Creed dies in the ring. Killed by Yvonne Drago. Oh my God. Spoiler alert. I mean, I didn't like that. I, I it was, I, I mean, I guess there's, you know, they have to raise the stakes. It has to be dramatic. Stakes, Come on, man. But they had to kill him? They yeah. had to kill Apollo Creed? Yeah, they did. But then again, without that, then we wouldn't have got you that beautiful gotten... specimen of man, Michael B. Jordan, yep. playing Adonis Creed. That's right. And that guy, is he is one handsome dude. He is. He, <laughs> he is, is one handsome... If I could be any dude, I would want to... I, I, first of all, there are two black men. If I could come back in my next life, I want to be either Mike Coulter... Who's Mike Coulter? Mike Coulter from... Come on. Iron... He, Power Man and Iron Fist. Luke Cage. Oh, my God, yes. I, I mean... <laughs> Please be Luke Yeah, Cage. can I be? I mean, come on. <laughs> or Michael B. Jordan. Yes. And, I, and I have an action figure of one of them. I have I have a Michael B. Jordan action figure right up there. Oh, go get it. Go get it. No, I'm not going to go get it. Because it can't be. But anyway, so in my next life, I want to yes. be Mike Coulter or Michael B. Yes. Jordan. Yeah, yes. Yes and go. yes. So there you go. I'd like to be one of those two. Because it doesn't get any better. <laughs> in terms of being fine specimens of humanity. Yeah. The two of yeah. them. Yeah, I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. So... <laughs> um, uh, Just Your Average Joe says, where does Cinderella Man rank for you? I love Cinderella Man. I mean, first of all, Russell Crowe's in it. I mean, it's good. I like Cinderella. And Cinderella Man... Yeah, that is a good film. It's a I really good. That. That's a really interesting yes. story, too. A man it who is. wasn't a boxer that had to... He lost everything Wasn't and has it to become a boxer. based on a true story? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, I really like Jim, that film. Jim Braddock? Is it Jim Braddock? Yeah, that was really good. Um, it's really good. And I, I will watch anything Russell Crowe is in. I know you will. I mean, if there's a third man I'd want to come back as, it's Russell Crowe's Maximus and Gladiator. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, Cordless, Cor Cordless Cordy sent in a super chat and said, Have you seen Battle Royale 2000? Japanese film. Heard it's great, but also that it has been banned from getting a U.S. release for a decade. Whoa. Would it surprise you to know that I have three versions of Battle Royale on Blu-ray <laughs> right over do. there? Um... 
I am a huge fan of Battle Royale. I think it's amazing. It's it's one of the great exploitation movies ever made. And if you if you've never seen it, you've got to be able to get it because it, it was released. There's a great Blu-ray release of it. Um, I think Arrow did a great box set that it's probably really expensive to get now because yeah, they've. If you haven't seen, if you guys have not seen, oh, we should do Battle Royale. Have you seen Battle Royale? No. Oh, you know what? Okay, that's what we're doing. Our Wednesday movie is going to be Battle Royale. Okay. We're going to do Battle Royale. All right. What is Monday again? I don't know yet. Oh, wasn't it? Wasn't it something you got from Dieter? Well, I, I've, yeah. I've, oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Our Monday movie is a. a, a the woman. A uh, woman. A, a good woman is hard to find. Good, it's it's one of these. Somewhere. Yeah. It's. Let me see which one is which. Yes. So. Oh, oh man. This is our. Wait a minute. I have to switch. So our our Monday movie. Uh, I just got this. If you haven't seen this, is this, which I neither one of us have seen. It is a good woman is hard to find. Now this is the German Blu-ray that Dieter sent me. By the way, maybe it'll be hard for people to see it. Uh, it might be, but I want to do this we anyway. We might have to do a Zoom party to show this film so you guys can see it. It's Gilbert outside. Sounds like he's outside. Um, but anyway, so that's what we're doing. Monday is a good woman is hard to find. Watch the trailer for this movie and tell me you don't want to see it. And then I, 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 I let's well, let me table because Wednesday we're supposed to have a special guest. And we're oh. going to do Do the Right Thing. Okay. So it's either Do the Right Thing, if our special guest can't come, then we'll do Battle Royale. And if not, it'll be next Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Stewart sends in a super chat and says, I met Iron Mike one time, shook his hand, so soft. Iron Mike Tyson's hand. I like, <laughs> I like to think that I his hand... I love that his hand is soft. I do too. <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah, Tulu is outside. And it's 8.30. I don't think she's outside. I think she's... Oh, no. She's outside. I think she's barking from inside. No. Well, let me text Sophie. No, no. It's fine. Well, no. Because we have to... Uh, we have to... I know. But we still have to do all our endings and our voting. So you're going to text your daughter while you're on the show? Well, yeah. I've done it before. Keep talking. Mm. Yes. I've wanted to see this for a while. I have not seen this movie. But Dieter sent it to me, so we're doing A Good Woman is Hard to Find. Watch the trailer. I guarantee you'll want to see it because it looks terrific. And then hopefully we'll do Battle Royale. If not, on Wednesday we're either going to do Battle Royale or if we have our special guest, we will be doing Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing, which always do the right thing. Always do the right always thing. Always do the right thing. So, all right, we come to that time again. Yes. On a scale of our, our, of our bottoms-up scale. What is our bottoms-up scale? Our bottoms up scale is from one to four because there are four glasses of wine in mm. a bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so on a scale of one to four one glasses to four. of wine, what would you give Rocky. Rocky? I'm going to give Rocky three glasses of wine. Three? What? Come on, woman. <laughs> Come on, woman. Show you a real man. <laughs> it's my clever Lang. Four glasses of wine. Rocky gets four glasses of wine. Wow. Maybe you have to be a guy. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I think three is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, Cordless Cordy says, I bought the Blu-ray of Battle Royale. It's a collection of one and two plus what are the three versions you have? I have a domestic, uh, an early Arrow version, their big box set that came out later, and the American collection. Uh, by the way, Battle Royale 2 Requiem is not good. Um, I don't like it. And uh, I, 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 I still think the theatrical version of Battle Royale 1 is better than the director's cut, although I do like the director's cut. So there you go. Well, I guess that ends our episode number 63 for Rocky. Yes, it does. So Monday, we're doing A hard, a Good Woman is Hard to Find. Yes. We're doing A Good Woman is Hard to Find, and then Wednesday, we're either doing Do the Right Thing or Battle Royale. Do you know what next week's uh, Romantic Friday movie is going to be? 
I don't yet, but it's going to be mushy. Because who was it that, oh, Julius was asking for mushy. All right. We'll do mushy. It'll be mushy. So um, you better be ready. And you better show up. I don't like when there's only like 50 people bouncing around in here because I pick mushy movies. Well, you pick this one. This is not mushy. Well, it is if you get hit in the face. <laughs> then, you're, then your face is mush. Stallone's eyes are pretty mushy at the end <laughs> of the fight. It's very mushy. <laughs> so, um, well, I want to thank everybody for supporting the channel. Uh, I want to thank our moderating staff. We've got the Richard, Joshua Levesque is here, Robert Pariso is here. Uh, I don't know what, is, is that all? Uh, yeah, which is good. So thank you to our great moderating staff. If you want to go to the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page or the Whining About Movies Facebook page, go find the Richard. They have watch parties and Zoom parties, and he's showing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, so go find him and join. Like and subscribe to the channel if you do. Send us letters. Our, the website's being been renovated, and you can write me, write the website. Go to theburnetwork.net and send us videos. And by the way, tomorrow on Rob Observations, I don't know if I can call it a world premiere, but uh, Patrick and Dieter Bastian made a short film together Ooh. and sent it to me. <gasps> And I'm going to be playing it. It's six and a half minutes long. I want to see that. And I'm going to be uh, playing it tomorrow on... It might be the first Rob Observations world premiere. What time are you on tomorrow? Uh, I'm going to be on at one. Hopefully I'm done working. Yeah, maybe at two. I don't know yet. But uh, so that's a first. That's awesome. There's never been a Rob <laughs> Observations really world premiere. <laughs> a world premiere. Of a short film. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, Augie's back and sends in a super chat and says, Have you guys done Almost Famous yet? One of my favorite movies. It's in oh. my top ten of all time. Especially we the untitled version, the long version. I am a golden god. We have to do that for Rock him. and roll can save the world. The chicks are great. I sound like an asshole. It's great. We should do that. We did Jerry Maguire. Cameron Crowe, why not have him return? Yeah. I, I have no problem with that. Yes. All right, well, so ends this show. Why don't you take us uh, out? Well, Richard says that he's going to show Battle Royale, Royale tonight because he's so excited about it. Oh, okay. Richard's going to show Battle Royale tonight. So if you've never seen Battle Royale, I highly recommend seeing it. It is subtitled. By the way, Richard, if you show a dubbed version, you're dead to me. Just so you know. <laughs> you better you better show the I'm subtitled scared. version. Um, uh, it's been nice knowing you. But, um, yeah, ba if you have not seen Battle Royale, it is a bonkers movie that you will not believe when you see it. And you'll see why they haven't shown it in America in a while. Uh -oh. Why they might not, I don't know. It's But, boy, is it good. All right, well, take us out. <clears throat> Everyone you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is listen. That's true. And have a better night. Have a better night and go to the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page and join the Richards watch party for Battle Royale if you haven't seen it. <laughs> By the way, keep drinking because, man, Battle Royale. Actually, here's a drinking game for you. Every time a teenager dies in Battle Royale, take a drink. Take a drink. And report back. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>